I just want to encourage you at the end of this video, there will be an icon with my face on it over here. Click on that to subscribe and there will be a playlist that leads you to one playlist that is suitable to you or a playlist that I've uploaded just for you to check out. Click on that as well and that will lead you to all my other playlists. Please peruse throughout the channel. There is a lot to find that is interesting. And if you like what you see, subscribe. So without further ado, let's get into what I am here to talk about today. This is she, Miss Nobuntu, and you are tuned into my channel, Miss Nobuntu, titled the same as my name. Welcome again, and today I am actually here to talk about some things that I learned throughout my 20s that have helped me cross over into my into my 30s that I am using as tools right now. Um, but before I start, I just want to say thank you so much to the people who have taken time to subscribe to the channel and continue to watch and send me heartfelt and very touching inboxes and DMs and emails just thanking me for whichever uh, upload that that person saw and felt really that that particular upload was talking to them and talking to their need and talking to what they were actually dealing with at the time and being able to find help from listening to my channel. So I do encourage you to subscribe and like and share and comment below throughout all the uploads that you see. A quick alert before I start this video, I live in a very noisy compound so uh, you will hear the sound of children screaming and you might even hear some music blasting but please excuse that. So number one of things I learned uh, from my 20s that I have taken on over into my 30s and apply, one of the first things is trust your instinct, trust your gut. There are many times where uh, my gut was speaking to me I remember and because I didn't know that that's what the gut feels like and that's what the gut sounds like when it is speaking. I didn't know that was my gut. I didn't know what that feeling was because no one had ever taught me or told me about the gut. So a gut is a gut feeling is that feeling that mm, that makes you go, wait a minute, that doesn't make sense or your stomach just begins to churn and you feel like there's butterflies, but not in a good way. Sometimes it's in a good way because it's instinct towards a good thing. But, um, you know, instinct is that thing that you, you can feel it, you sense it. And if you know what instinct feels like and what your gut feeling sounds like and feels like, then you're able to take a moment and respond to what's going on. What is my instinct saying right now? And let me just wait. Figure out what your instinct feels like, what your instinct sounds like, um, what the sensation of it is like. Maybe you feel it through your eyes, maybe you feel it on your back or in your, in your tummy. It's usually in your gut. <laughs> That's why it's called a gut feeling. Um, it's usually, there's many ways, other ways besides your gut to, to, um, to discern it, but the gut is certainly a way that that lets you know it is your other brain it's certainly the other brain that tells you wait a minute hold on something is off here and trust your instinct that's one of the first things that i i, I learned from my 20s trust it um more than you trust your logic your brain what your brain is telling you trust what you feel in your gut go with that first and foremost in friendships relationships workshops never let anyone talk you into adjusting your morals and your values another way. Do not adjust your morals and your values. And sometimes you will get uh, cast out of friendship circles because you hold on and you stand by your morals and values. Sometimes you will be fired from your job. Sometimes you will be rejected by a potential suitor. But all I'm saying is what I learned from my 20s is that it was never worth it to adjust my morals and my values to keep someone's attention, keep someone's uh, approval of me and like of me. Never, ever compromise, never adjust, 
never tweak your morals and your values and your standing uh, in order to suit somebody else's. They actually don't respect you for doing that favor for them. They actually uh, learn from that that, oh, this is someone I can take advantage of. This is someone I can bend whichever way I want and manipulate and walk all over in whichever way I want because they're not strong enough to stand up for themselves. So it never works out to your benefit, although it might look like it does initially, in the long, in the like medium term, it really just never works out to your benefit. So stick to your guns. You have clear intentions. Um, clear intentions and uh, clear, when you have clear intentions, then you have a clear purpose and you have clear goals. Um, when you don't have clear intentions, so, so and so is doing this, you go on after it and you try to do it too because, oh, that looks easy enough to do, I can do it too, but you don't know what their intentions are. You know, when you don't have clear intentions, so and so is doing that or has that goal and you go after those goals too, but you don't have a, a reason. A, an intention is what is your reason for doing this? What is your drive? What is your intention? What, what is behind you uh, taking this trajectory in this way or in that way? What is driving? What is the driving force behind that? That is your intention. That is, and that's a deep-seated place of foundation. Um, and that's important in, in goal setting, in goal um, achieving, in, in goal living through your goals. Having an intention is important, otherwise you are following trends and you are following what people are doing and you're saying, well, it looks easy enough, oh, well, that looks easy enough, oh, well, that looks doable, but what's your intention? To have a clear intention allows you to align with your calling because you have a clear intention. Your calling is that thing that is the first spark of your intention, the intention for doing any and every single thing throughout your days um, is your calling. And so it's, it's that spark behind your intention and the reason you do every single thing that you do. Have clear intentions and th that will lead you to clear goals and courses of action and you will achieve a lot. And don't follow other people's trajectories because you don't know what their intentions are. Just stay within your calling, stay within your intentions and be secure in that and be comfortable in that. I have learned that you are more effective doing one thing at a time. And this has been a valuable lesson for me. Just doing one thing and completing it, then moving on to the next thing makes you more effective. And it allows you to uh, tick your goals one by one as you go through them, knowing that this thing that I'm ticking off is completed and finished with. And I'm going on to the next thing and I'm going to fill in the form and just work through the ups and downs, the arounds of the next thing until I am finished. And then tick it off and then move on to the next thing. Spreading yourself all over the place means you start things and you don't finish them. And you never achieve anything as a result. And even just achieving completion is an achievement. Um, so I think, I know for sure that doing one thing at a time is actually more influential and more effective than people understand it to be. People like to be busy bodies and do 50,000 things and, you know, fill every moment with something to do, but it's 15 things that they're doing throughout a day. It's not effective. It's not influential. Yes, you're busy throughout the whole day, but you are not, you're your punches are not making the kind of contact and impact that you want them to and that you need them to. When friendships come to an end, allow them to come to an end and let them go because it tells you that you have gone through and surpassed a growth season of your life and that season has come to an end. And if you stay within that place where your growth cannot be, does not fit anymore because it's too big for it, if you stay within that place, 
then you yourself are stunting your own growth. So when friendships come to an end, let them go. You have grown, you've learned all that you could learn and it's your time to move on to the, to the next lesson, to the next set of lessons and to, to broaden and widen and deepen. So let things go when they have reached their sell-by date. The other valuable lesson that I learned from my 20s is to mind your own business. Get on with the business of your own life. Figure out what your own business is and mind it. And don't get involved with other people's business unless they ask for your opinion or for your help and, and you give it when you can and where you can give it and where you have decided you are able to give it. Keep your head down and get on with the business that you are minding that is your business. Everyone will be tempted to be jealous of other people's progress, other people's things, other people's it, whatever. And what I learned is to um, resist the temptation of being jealous for other people's things and resist the temptation to feel entitled to be jealous of other people's achievements and things by asking myself one single question. Am I willing to do what they did? Am I willing to do what they are doing to have whatever it is that they have that I desire? And if the answer is no, it settles the dispute for me. Sometimes you're not willing, I'm not willing to do it because it's unethical what they are doing. You know, I'm not willing to do an ethical activity in order to have things, in order to achieve things, in order to have material things and have a huge paycheck. I'm not willing to do that, so I'm not jealous of somebody who's gotten their external things through shady means and greasy means and, you know, questionable means. I'm not willing to live a life where, you know, I'm sleeping with one eye open. That's the negative side of this question. And then there's the other side of this question where, you know, it's something that you also desire and you then have to approach it differently beyond, besides jealousy and say, well, I, I also desire that Lord. Show me how in my life I can achieve that and how I can use what I am seeing someone else having achieved or someone else getting on with and doing with their lives. How I can use that as inspiration as opposed to um, a way of competing with them, a way of following in someone's footsteps yet I don't know what their intentions are or were. Give me an intention that aligns with me, give me a direction that aligns with me, that gets me to that very same outcome but with an intention and a purpose and a reason and goals that I understand that will fortify my life in a way that my life needs. This is for me one of the very best things that I learned from my early 20s onwards. That's why I don't want it anyone's anything no matter how huge I don't want anyone's anything if the very if someone has the very same thing that I would like I say oh great Lord if you can do it for them that tells me that you can do it for me and I desire to have that too put me in a situation place me on a path where I can go to that and strengthen me and equip me and um, and teach me to walk that road so that eventually I get to where this person is at, to, to the thing that you have been able to give to this person through all that they've been willing to go through. It is futile to be jealous of anybody's anything. Don't give in to that temptation because it's a temptation and it's a, it's a sense of entitlement as well. Don't give in to it. If anything, despise it. If anything, when it does come up, when it does show up, it doesn't mean you've already done the thing that is not the thing to do, but have ways, find constructive ways to deflect it. When that uh, temptation to be jealous of somebody's things does come up, ask yourself, are you willing to do what they're doing or what they did? And if your answer is no, get your mind right about the things that you desire, that you are willing to work for, and the things that you're not willing to work for. So. Um, I no longer apologize to people who are jealous of things that I have, I, you know, I have achieved that God has blessed me with even by grace and nor do I look at other people's blessings and other people's situations and want them. I really just, I don't. 
well that is it for this video thank you so much for tuning in again and watching stay well and be well and i will see you next time i also want to remind you to please join my campaign of the year of let's see 2017 that is starting next year our stories of courage overcoming fear over everything that fear has hindered us from doing we are starting it at the beginning of 2017 so if you haven't pledged below in the comment section please pledge below and i'll also link up the video that is talking about that particular campaign of the year of let's see 2017 and i hope to see you on the other side having joined having pledged and having taken part also i'm still waiting for your letters i'm still waiting for your emails if you are seeking any advice and you would like to ask me about it and i will answer it on the channel uh, please write to me at msnobuntu at gmail.com and I will make sure to answer on the channel, keeping obviously your identity anonymous. Well, that's it. I'll see you next time. Happy holidays. Stay well.